name is Ali Shiasavar from Breacher Digital. Uh, we are here in uh, Omicron's pre-compliance test chamber in Austria and uh, in this video uh, we are going to talk about radiated and conducted immunity tests that we have to carry out as part of the European Union's EMC directive. Uh, the aim of this part of the law is to have a look at how your uh, device under test, i.e. your product, will perform under various disturbances. In order to achieve this, we have to carry out a set of tests. Uh, these are known as radiated and conducted immunity or susceptibility tests and they very much are looking at the emissions that are on your product, how they deteriorate the performance of your product for example, or maybe disturbances on the line, how they affect the performance of your product. It can be things like a lightning strike uh, or perhaps uh, an electrostatic discharge from the finger of the user or the operator. And there's a series of tests which may vary depending on your product and the application of your product, however we're going to cover the most common ones. So first let's have a look at the radiated uh, immunity test and sometimes it's called the uh, susceptibility test. This is a little bit like the opposite of the radiated emissions test whereby we uh, uh, looked at what was being emitted from the device under test and we picked it up with the antenna. On the immunity test we will do pretty much the opposite. We energize the antenna and we emit uh, electromagnetic field against the uh, device under test and we look at how the performance of the device changes or not changes as the case may be. Now the field of strength is being defined in the uh, standard uh, depending on your product and application and the performance criteria of how much your device can be uh, can, can, can degrade in performance is also defined in the standard. Now, this is a little bit of a hard test to carry out, mainly because uh, you need uh, to have a calibrated antenna, the chamber needs to be calibrated so that you know that you've got a uniform field that is going towards the uh, device on the test, and of course you need a very big and powerful uh, uh, RF amplifier to be able to generate this field. And therefore this test is usually carried out in an EMC test house. Another test that is uh, usually carried out in the AMC test house uh, as opposed to a pre-compliance is the conducted immunity test. In the conducted immunity test what we're trying to do is we're trying to couple electromagnetic energy onto the cables of your art device on the test and then the standard state at a certain performance criteria when we look at how the performance of the uh, device on the test changes or perhaps not changes. However, the setup is very, very complicated with regard to the coupling networks that you're going to use in order to couple depending on the type of port that it is, whether it's a signal port or a power port, and you need many different coupling equipments in order to do this, and that is why it is actually usually done in an EMC test house. So far we've talked about conducted immunity and radiated immunity but there are a whole bunch of other tests that you have to carry out as part of this section of the law. Uh, but the, the tests that you carry out very much depend on your product and its applications. The most common ones however are electrostatic discharge, that is the ESD test. Uh, then there is electrical fast transient or what we call burst uh, uh, test and uh, then there is surge test. And these are the common ones uh, that we're going to carry out next. So uh, for a um, ESD pre-compliance uh, test, this is a typical test setup, uh, you have got a vertical coupling plane, uh, you've got a horizontal coupling plane. This part is actually tied via about one mega ohms to a metal plane at the f on, on the floor to give you good coupling down to the floor. And the uh, equipment on the test will sit over here. And then you have a ESD simulator, thank you, uh, which looks typically something like this, and you can do two types of, uh, of, of ESD discharge. Uh, one is a conducted discharge, which has got uh, with this pointy tip of the ESD simulator. You uh, touch perhaps a screw of the equipment on the test, uh, and then you have got one which is for air discharge. So this tip is removed, and this one has got a wider and fatter tip and with this one you do air discharge. And so we are going to do the test. Florian, would you mind doing that? So we discharge onto the vertical.
and then onto the horizontal. Then onto the housing, onto the shielding of the housing, not onto the pin inside of the connector. And perhaps now we do an air discharge onto the one of the screws of the of the housing. Very good. And we see that our equipment on the test is still operating and therefore we have passed the test or at least we've got very good confidence that in an in a EMC test chamber it will pass. So now we're going to talk about the burst test. This is a typical test setup for the burst test. Uh, and effectively what this is, is a series of uh, voltages, a burst of voltages of defined rise time, fall time, amplitude, frequency, and these are all defined in the standard and they need to be coupled somehow to the cables. Uh, here I have got a capacitive coupling clamp uh, and as you can see we have passed down the power cable of uh, our Bodhi 100 down here. Uh, please note that these now are, 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 these tests are delivering enough energy to be harmful. So you have to be very careful when you're doing this sort of test. So the cable is going through here. I can close the clamp. And then we will send bursts down, down this cable, uh, which is going to go through uh, capacitively coupled to our equipment on the test and of course the objective is that we do not fail the performance criteria which again is uh, specified in the standard. So we are now going to start the test. Uh, this test typically takes two minutes uh, and every time you see that LED over there flashing a burst is going through. Uh, so we will not carry on for the entire two minutes uh, but a uh, few bursts have gone through already, is that correct? Okay, so can we, can we please just stop and uh, hopefully we have a look and we will see that our equipment on the test is still functioning correctly. Uh, so again, as that pre-compliance state, we have got a lot of uh, confidence that th this will uh, pass the test when we go to an EMC test house. The burst test was to emulate the impact of perhaps uh, relays closing and, and, and chattering, uh, the bounce on switches and the sparks that you may be getting. What we're going to look at now is the surge test. Now the surge test is designed to emulate perhaps the impact of a lightning strike on, light, on long cables. As you can imagine, this test can be quite dangerous because it has got a very large amount of energy that you are delivering. Um, on, a, on, a, on a device that has got a pluggable power supply, the surge test is usually applied to the, the, the power supply that you plug into the wall. Now, um, instead of showing you the surge test on just a power supply, which will not be terribly interesting, what we are going to show you is what happens if you perhaps use the wrong type of capacitors inside of your power supply, which are not designed to withstand the surge test. So here we've got a capacitor that is not uh, designed to withstand the surge test. This could very well be inside of a power supply. We are going to apply a surge to it and see what actually happens. Uh, the test is applied when you hear the beeping sound. So could you please start the test? And that was the surge test. 
Okay, so in these short series of introductory videos, we went through a whole range of tests that you can do as pre-compliance before, go, before going to the uh, EMC testing house. So I hope if you found them uh, informative. All that remains for me is to thank uh, Omicron for the help and support in, in uh, producing uh, these videos. And of course to Florian, our EMC test expert who has been over here helping us blow up capacitors. Thank you very much for watching.